idea was a hybrid between a fairy tale and an informative, uh, evocative, dramatic piece on children's cancer. But I really wanted to emphasize fairy tale. So the pitch was a little bit um, strange in the sense that you're pitching a, a film on children's cancer through a fairy tale aesthetic. So I wrote the script. Greg loved the script. Several other people in Los Angeles loved the script. And then the next phase was, OK, we're going to film it. And I pretty much got my budget. I got the amount of money that um, I, I budgeted the film for. But the problem was I've never, I never filmed in Serbia. I've done post-production. Well, uh, prior to this project, I worked with Sasha Knezhev on American Attic 2. I held him in post-production since post-production was done in Serbia. And um, I happened to help him to find a crew. Uh, so we've met at that point. And after it, uh, I've got involved in Cassandra Awakens um, a little bit after the pre-production started in Serbia. So I kind of helped him out. Um, I thought it was like an amazing project and I was kind of proud to do it. I really wanted to bring an American production sensibility in terms of moving quickly, having a deadline, going day to day, a really efficient sort of approach to it. And that's I think what the hybrid of this production wants. I wanted American efficiency in the production and moving quickly, not, I don't want to say quickly, but proficiently, everything, everything organized, going scene to scene, everything prepared. The most interesting thing was uh, for me working with American production because I'm kind of used to, to European concept of production. And there's a huge difference in, in the most important way, and that's uh, being director. Because in Europe, director tends to do like everything. He wants to be involved in every single thing that anyone does, because they kind of want to have control. Working with uh, Akos, the cinematographer of the film, um, my job was to explain to him what I wanted from a mise-en-scene standpoint, composition and, and um, theme, tone, and textuality. That's important to me, because I think my most difficult challenge of this film Everybody really liked the script, and they knew we had something special here. But my job was to emphasize the fact that it's not a horror film. There's sort of some, I don't want to say horror, but really formidable and ominous undertones to the film because you're dealing with such a serious subject matter like children's cancer. And there is a dark element in the film, but I had to stress it's not a horror film. There are undertones, but it's a fairy tale. I read the script and I was really excited by the way Sasha portrayed a very hard topic, how he decided to take another angle about a very, very hard fact, um, dying children and very, very hard and strong illnesses. And I like the fact that he um, decided to, to take another angle and to speak about it through the eyes of children. When you took uh, a look through the eyes of the girl, not through the eyes of society or through media or through even through the doctors, but we, we wanted to see how that girl feels like, you know, and how she is coping with uh, the terrible disease she, ha she is having, you know. So I think that's what the movie is about, about the children who have cancer, their inner world. So basically what Sasha did is that he tried to, to find some peaceful place for them in his imagination and to create like a world where they could ex es actually escape. I was very fortunate to work with such a great crew and everyone helped me hands down starting from Anna Renovitz, the producer, um, 
Akosh and Darko, who were the, uh, Darko's the animator of the film, CGI is fantastic to work with. Visual effects supervisor has to make sure that everything that is shot, um, since the VFX artists, uh, in case that's me too, but a lot of times it's another crew, and uh, in that case, the VFX supervisor has to make sure that the VFX artists have everything at, this, at their disposal to do their work <coughs> in the most efficient and best way possible. You know, so there are a lot of technical um, considerations that needs to be taken, a lot of data to be uh, collected and gathered on the shooting so that the uh, crew, the, art, the VFX crew, can later use that data to create believable CGI effects. da sam se pogledala u ogledalo, nisam verovala da sam to ja i šminkerka je baš dobro uradila to. Proces about the bold hair sounds like difficult, but it's not that difficult. Or maybe for me, because I like to do the, those things. Uh, I started to do makeup because of special effects, you know, and I was, I'm in love in special effects. But as I said, I don't have that many chance to, to, to do that, those things. I was um, excited and really I don't know, blown away by how serious that little girl was. And now I'm just talking about, you know, the fact that she is such a small child, but such a serious actress. Kada smo došli u Bajinu baštu, nisam znala da li ću snimati bosa ili da li ću imati nešto na nogama. Pa kada je počelo snimanje, oni su meni rekli da li ja mogu da to izdržim, da budem bosa i u haljini kratkih rukava. <laughs> With Milica, it was not a problem. Milica was amazing. I mean, that girl was walking barefoot in, in a, a dress that's uh, for summer, and it was cold outside, and uh, she didn't sleep for, for nights. Uh, she would fall asleep and then wake up. Uh, she was just magnificent. U Bajinoj bašti smo snimali četiri dana, i o, uh, jedan dan od toga smo snimali noćno snimanje uh, i ja sam bila u haljini i u kratkih rukava i bosa i bilo mi je baš hladno i par puta smo ponavljali to i bilo je baš zim. Uh, the Milica, uh, one thing that really stood out for me with her is how uh, stoically she managed to take all that because it was a lot of pressure on her, you know, shooting uh, uh, well, we had enough days, but we had just enough days to shoot everything, so uh, it wasn't uh, really too loose shooting, you know, and uh, she took it really, really well. She didn't complain. She did everything we asked her to do, and uh, one, the one time when we shot the night shots, it was really cold outside, but she did not complain at one time, so she just did it, and it was awesome. Devojka se suncu zamerila. Aj, baj, 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 suncu zamerila. Something I really enjoyed about the film was that I got a chance to work with um, Serbian folk singer um, Bilja Kristić, who I've always been a fan of, um, even from the United States. I listened to her, and I was a, a huge fan of her um, of her music. And actually, when I wrote Cassandra Awakens, I 
instantly in my mind said to, to myself, I'm going to get Vida Christi to do this music. I never met her, I never met her um, composer. Uh, we've never been formally introduced and I aggressively went after her and fortunately she is um, just a, not, not only a class lady but a, a wonderful artist who's worked in film before. The worst thing ever is to shoot in the exterior and everyone knows it. It's every producer's nightmare. Since you can control everything, you can predict everything, but you cannot predict weather. From a challenging standpoint, I think the biggest thing we had was we had weather issues. It was supposed to rain, I think, almost every day of filming, and that presents a giant problem with budget, extra days at the hotel. And we're already limited. We already went over budget a bit and we were fortunate enough to not have that problem. It seems as if the cinematic gods were looking at us because every time we filmed, it seemed it did not rain, and every time we stopped filming, it rained. So I kept telling the crew, I remember everybody was very um, skeptical, worried about the rain because it would present a big problem. And I kept telling them, look, we have the cinematic gods looking after us, and they will help us if they believe this project is special enough. Unfortunately, it did not rain. The second issue was the River Drina. The River Drina is, has a tide. The Drina is a really, really fast river. You know, it's, I mean, uh, unforgiving and quite, uh, quite um, mood, moody. You can call it, call it moody. <laughs> sometimes it's really slow flowing and sometimes it's really like, fast, you know, faster than what you see in, in, uh, in a video when you see that whole body of water moving uh, and over and around the house, it, you really feel the force of it. So that was a pretty, uh, pretty problematic uh, is issue uh, with, the, with the movie. So we have to come up, uh, come up with ways because we had children on boats and children around the house and it was quite a dangerous situation. So we had to, uh, actually my work also comes into play here because uh, we couldn't shoot everything uh, on, this, on, uh, on the set, but we tried to, to do the most, most of this stuff in real, of course. I really take a different uh, approach to filmmaking. I believe in a spiritual, visceral, ethereal uh, sensibility when filming, and um, I, I really look at that from a nature standpoint um, that you have to look at the totality of, of everything around you and um, if the project and the energy, collective energy of not only the crew, the story, the script uh, synchronizes with where you're filming, everything's gonna be okay. Fortunately for us, it did. He really puts himself out there to explain what you should feel and how you should, how you should, you know, accumulate all your feelings and just give them out because he, that's what he does and you can see that through how he works and how he treats people. He wants them to be as honest as as open as they can be and that's why I really do think that he did an amazing job with this and hopefully everybody else will see that. And this film actually shows that to the world. So it's not just about giving money as I've said to some causes, it's about um, empathy and it's about uh, true help like heart to heart to those children so that's the most I can ask from this film to bring to the world actually not just to us and making almost the, the entire question itself of cancer a caricature and a fairy tale in examining it I think it's a lot more easier to do in that way than take such a dark approach and make it artistic which is the challenge and make it a fairy tale, which is even more challenging, but um, I enjoyed the challenge.